I put a prompt in this morning. Create a play along version of Homes Under the Hammer, where I'm... <laughs> oh jeez, uh, where, where I sort of gave it a description of the of, of, of how the game of how the show works. So you start off in an auction, you're bidding for, um, uh, you're bidding, you know, against other people in the auction room, and, and then you and then you get the house, and then you get a valuation from local estate agent. And then you get an overview of the work required to bring the house back up to potential and the budget for all that timeline. And then you pick which work you want to undertake. Then you get it reviewed again by the estate agent. <laughs> so before we get to, can you see my screen now? Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You'll see it. I've not actually played this yet. Um, the um, popular uh, morning daytime TV show, um, uh, Homes Under the Hammer, um is a uh, mainstay of the uh um um the, the folks that don't have to work for a living or, or, or choose not to or what have you and, and dream about renovating a house and, and making money out of it um basically i wrote this prompt here i've not like I say not 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 really tested this fully but i basically described how home home un, homes under the hammer kind of works from a gameplay um, perspective. Then I asked it to basically act as a game engine for a text-based text based play along game based on this. So I talked about the various elements of the show. So it starts off, um, the, the players in an auction room, bidding for a house, what not wanting to be outbid by other people in the room or telephone bids or what have you. Then maybe they get the house, then it gets valued by a local estate agent. And then the presenter of the show says, oh, you could do this. You could turn this into a, uh, an ensuite, or you could do the wet room here, or you could have an extension. Uh, and they sort of give you an idea of budget and what have you. So the idea is that in this game version of it, you buy the house, buy the property, you decide what work you want to undertake. Things come along, things, property development never quite works as you, as you want it, like many things in life. So I've introduced a sort of an element of uh, random nature. So, um, you know, work doesn't always go smoothly. So, which this may provide additional challenges, such as budget increases and delays to completion. So when the work's complete, local estate agent returns to provide a new valuation for the property, both for sale and for rental, and then you'll then the 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 AI will present us an update on whether the investment has been worthwhile or not, and if so, it'll give us an estimate of any any profits we've made. Now this was the one that really made me chuckle because when it because I love music, so whenever I'm listening to watch not often, but when I'm watching Homes of the Hammer, it really annoys me because the, the 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 basically play. A little scene will complete and then a piece of music will play in the background, but it's obviously related to the, the title of the song is related or the lyrics are related to the scenario that's played out and it really annoyed me. But I thought, you know, let's throw that in. So I said <clears throat> throughout the game, between each interaction, the game will play, because obviously it won't actually play music yet, this stuff, but it, the game will play songs where the song title relates to the response in the current prompt. So that's that's the prompt. We'll we'll see if this works because, like I said, I've only run this 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 first thing here. It always defaults to dollars as well as we'll see. So you know, there we go. But so this is what I've chucked that this prompt in, and I should just say we're working on Chat GPT four here. Chat GPT three point five is the free one, but it, it's not it's not capable of this kind of level of. <sighs> is it realism? Uh, Realism and, 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 and the ability to reason, reason stuff through, work stuff out, you know, it just, it just can't do it in the same way. We can run the same prompt and it just... So I think that's might... why people are going crazy about ChatGPT, isn't it? Because it, it has a certain reasoning or filtering that is akin to the human mind or, or human it, mind. It, That's exactly it. It's able to bring different concepts together. Like for, for here, I'm going... I want an interactive game that I can play along with, and the 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 the, the, the subject is homes of the hammer. You know, it can bring those two things together and and reason it out. Whereas three point five can't do that, and you can apply that to anything. You know, 
So basically, as we've got here, it says, um, Welcome to Hamza the Hammer, the text based game. You're in a property auction house. <laughs> Makes me chuckle. E eager to get me. <laughs> A eagerly waiting to bid on your chosen property. Let's get started. And in square brackets, it says song, money, that's what I want by Barrett Strong. You know, just it's just great. So the free properties available to auction for auction today, a free bed semi in need of summer of renovation, starting at 100 k dollars. Uh, two beds detached in decent condition with a starting bid of 150 dollars and a four bed detached house requiring extensive refurbishment with a starting bid of two hundred thousand dollars so chris what <laughs> what which one and we're playing this live we well, just I don't, don't know, know yeah and uh, we don't know what our budget is but let's let's no, say, no. um so let's go for the let's go for one number one okay so so quite, uh, let's see, slightly risk averse, which we like. So we select one. Great. You've chosen to bid on the free bed, bed semi in need of some renovation. The starting bid of 100K. <laughs> nice, nice choice of song. <laughs> so the ocean has started and the bidding is heating up. Current bid 100K. Place a bid, type the amount you'd like to bid. Remember, you want to get the most competitive price without being outbid or outpriced by other new auction room or on the phone. What one, do you bid? Five. One, two, five. five. I can I mean, feel the tension showing, in the room. Showing, like, my... <laughs> <laughs> oh, my God. Well, oh, jeez. We should try, shouldn't we? 135. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, God. There's even tension in the response, isn't it? There's a pause in the room. Oh, yeah. <laughs> Brilliant. <laughs> okay, now the, now the real works. I mean, can you imagine? This is just literally a prompt that I ran this morning, that I created this morning. I'm like, I wonder if. So we've got like we've got our valuation. <laughs> <laughs> so market value um, one hundred and forty-five in its current state. Rental. We made ten 000. grand already. Yeah, happy days. Uh, the kitchen renovation, bathroom renovation, new floor and paint. It looks like it all needs doing, but um, mm. any combination. Um, yeah, I think. Yeah, oh, yeah, we can. Okay. You can choose any combination of the options listed above. I mean, bathrooms. A rewire is going to be essential, isn't it? I'm, I'm, yeah, I'm, it's I've generally got, I've got, code, isn't it? You code. Yeah. yeah. So, um, the kitchen. It's always a nice to have. It's always a bit of a wow factor. I know, but, but you can just get new cupboard fronts and put them on and. It's kind of like much cheaper. I can't believe we're having this conversation, Chris. <laughs> um, on, yeah, so I, I okay. would go three and four, and then yeah, I, I, would, the yeah. Is I would do some of the work myself, but maybe that's not within the game. So I don't <laughs> no, know. No. you might fry chat GPT four if we do that. So yeah, four, four and three. Um, let's run that. You've chosen to complete the following work on your new property, new floor and paint throughout. It take two weeks. It costs us seven k. Electrical we wire five k. It's going to take a week. Sung Renegades by X. Is that the? Is that like the the people that we're engaging? <laughs> oh, here we go. Yeah. <laughs> oh, the, the contractors start work on the renovation during electrical we wiring. They discover some hidden features that require additional work, increasing the cost by two k, and ask, and adding an extra week to the project timeline. So our costs have gone. <laughs> Petty is serenading. <laughs> so we've done. So what's happened here is that it's kind of gone straight into the response, the value increase based on that work. We've not had any sort of back and forth to say, "Hang on a minute, we we want to do the kitchen now." Kind of. Hey, there's a primal scream tune in there as well. Absolutely nice. great. Nice. So we said, well, "That was a flip. That was a good flip, wasn't it?" 
Yeah, yeah, it was, yeah. So then again, I suppose what you would do with this, if you were minded, you would go back to the prompts and say, right, at the end of the, we need to bring in more about the budget. So we need a set budget to start with. Yeah, you could have a um, random budget, couldn't you? On, I mean, you know, whether it be between 150 and 250 grand or something. Yeah. And then, I, then if you spend out, then you're a bit, then you, you're sent to the, you're sent somewhere. Yeah, somewhere else on daytime TV hell. Uh, or or <laughs> any, anything anything you've got at the end of that, you can reinvest into the property. And obviously, you can get into other properties. Um, but, you know, to me, that, I mean, that's the most ridiculous 10 minutes I've ever spent gaming, I think, in my life, playing Bones Under the Hammer. But it worked. Um, it was quite, I was really engaged. It was quite... Yeah. Yeah, well, yeah, that's it. We're, we're both a bit like, oh, God, you know, I'm, you know, but, you know. And then, so let me sort of go back to, like I say, it keeps coming back to this thing of, I wonder if, and, you know, and I think that's what's so interesting. I think so many people are missing the trick with it, this, because they're thinking about students are going to cheat at the homework. Uh, we're all going to get replaced by robots. All of this stuff that's the common mantra. And no one's going, holy fuck, what, what are the amazing things that we can, we can do? The daft things, the pr productivity kind of hacks we can apply. It's the step up, isn't it? It's the step up. It's like not starting from zero with anything. If by yeah. one prompt, all of a sudden you've got the whole world of kind of media or yeah, story yeah. or whatever. Or, so or information science. What, all, yeah. yeah, precisely right. So um, your first move after your prompt is so well kind of informed that it's that it's unlike any scenario we've ever been in in, in the kind of world of information technology, really. Yeah, I'm, I'm Phil Birchnell. I am a consultant working in creative, digital, and media uh, businesses. Um, I've got very interested in AI uh, of late, or, or for a while actually, um, but recently with the sort of accessibility of um, ChatGPT 3.5 and latterly uh, ChatGPT 4. I've really sort of got on or tried to get under, under the skin of just what it can do. Not, not from the, the, there's a lot of kind of noise really, really at, at the minute. And I, I've got a couple of theories on this. I think some people think of chat GPT as posh Google that will just sort of get the answers that are better than, you know, just having a scrabble around on Google. Some people have got the pitchforks out and a sort of, you know, hastily uh, announcing the end of the world that we're all going to be replaced by robots. And then you've got a certain sort of group of people saying, oh my God, students are going to be able to cheat at uh, their homework and, 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 you know, that things will never be the same again in education. And I hear all of that, uh, but I think it sort of distract, detracts us away from really experimenting with this technology around productivity you know the way we do stuff and i think there's some huge huge gains uh, in productivity around what you can do with this stuff uh, but also yeah entertainment what it what's it i have not, no firm answers for this at the minute but entertainment there's so much you can do um just kind of pushing the technology coming at it with with ideas um and uh, I suppose my thing was, I, I, I'm a kid of the 80s, and I had a Spectrum 48K uh, when I was uh, eight, and um, I used to love buying games for me Spectrum, but I really used to really love trying to make games for Spectrum, and I've never been a coder. Um, brilliant thing about Spectrum, it ran basic, so you could sort of just about get your head around creating stuff. Uh, and I'd always fancied myself as a bit of a sort of, you know, game maker in uh, on my spectrum. But obviously, 
being eight or what have you and having that much knowledge in these things, my, my, my plans were always a bit flawed. And, you know, so I remember making a version of um, the quiz show Countdown, which was about the same sort of time, maybe in 1984 or something. I was kind of watching Countdown. I thought, oh, I bet you could make a, a, a game around Countdown. And, and I kind of managed, I managed to program this thing in basic and certain things I could do, certain things I couldn't do, but it kind of looked and felt like Countdown. Um, and that's as far as I really got back in the day. And I think accessing ChatGPT4 sparked a bit of curiosity in me that it probably took, in a weird way, took me back to early mid eighties and Maybe it was just sort of the text-based interface because it's like we've gone through all of this thing of, you know, uh, digital user interfaces, amazing graphical capabilities. And all of a sudden we're sort of sat in front of one of the most powerful bits of technology we've ever had. And we've got a, we've got a, like a text-based interface. And maybe that's what it, maybe it was, that's what sort of took me back to my days of, um, messing around on a section, but it really did spark thoughts of how you could use this stuff. What does it do is a, is a, is a big question. What is it is, is relatively easy to ask, to answer. Um, it's a, essentially it's a, it takes the form of a chat bot um, it's artificial intelligence driven uh, is probably the most advanced consumer accessible AI products uh, we've seen. Well, I think it is basically. And um, to talk to its purpose, yeah, it looks like a chat bot that you might have when you, if you're complaining about a delivery not arriving from Curry's, um, it's a text-based user interface, um, whereby you kind of type in a, prompt as we call them and it'll generate a response based on that prompt again the prompt the response is all text-based at the minute um it to give you an idea of what it can do it's been basically trained on billions of pieces of information uh up until 2021 there's a cut off so you can't ask it about today's news at the moment because it, it won't have a clue. You can't even ask it about Jack, chat GPT-4 because it doesn't know of its own existence, uh, the latest update. Um, but if you imagine practically every bit, bit of information you find on the internet um, is available for it, but rather than serving up res a result like Google would, um, it's able to process and contextualize the information based on the prompt that you've, you've put in. So for example, um, try to think of a good, good, simple example. You know, you could ask, you could ask, you could type a prompt that says, uh, explain the theory of relativity and how this relates to quantum, uh, quantum physics and do it. Yeah. Tell me, tell me as a 10 year old, basically. And it would give you, and it has, because I've asked it, a very concise, informative overview of those two different arches of science in a, in a, in a digestible way. Um, but then beyond that, it can be really, I'm not going to say creative, because I think that's the fundamental flaw, which I'm sure we'll explore, Krish, um, because I don't think it's particularly creative because remember it's sort of all the information all of all of the stuff it does is based on information that's already out there and it's not great at completely being creative with, or in its own right but lowercase c you can you can be creative with it and ask it to maybe some of the things that people have done it are, are things like you know um yeah right right uh write a, a story in the style of William Shakespeare, for example, and it'll script you something up that, that looks as if um, uh, Shakespeare himself might, might have written it. Or you could do, I mean, my wife's a teacher and, and she's very 
uh, skeptical about this technology, so I asked it to write a, a one-page synopsis of um, Shakespeare's writing style, um, and it produced this piece of work that I put under my wife's nose, and she said, "Oh my god, <laughs> that that is it." Um, so I think there are these sort of people are experimenting it with this to a degree at the minute. Uh, but I don't think we fully understand the power of how we can use it um, yet. I think we're still tinkering around the edges. And I think, like I say, that's covered by the notion of posh Google, the notion of pitchforks, it's going to replace our jobs, and the notion of students are just going to cheat, cheat at um, any, any kind of written homework they're given in future. So I noticed, I've noticed online like loads of pretty badly written articles, which I presume are being done by some sort of AI or chat GPT. But I know that you trained it to write some stuff in your style. Do you want to just? Yeah, yeah, yeah absolutely. I, I think this was, was one of my early experiments with it because I spend some of my time writing about the creative digital and media sector. So I sort of do a little bit of copywriting around that space. And I think I have a particular style I've written for uh, various trade publications, particularly in TV over the last couple of years. Um, and I wondered whether I could basically train um, the bot on my writing style, uh, which I did, I, I fed it, um, probably about five years worth of articles, opinion pieces and blogs uh, that I've written, all in this similar kind of style that I've got. Um, and then after a little while, we got a eureka moment and it kind of really did um, pick up my writing style. And I basically gave it then a few assignments to write in my style on a on a, on, a, on a couple of different topics. And one of them uh, was just about um, uh, the technology the, that they used to make Star Wars, the Man Mandalorian, the, the production technology, which is the, uh, the, uh, the, the 360 LED environment that's linked up to Unreal Engine uh, for, for, for rendering the sort of the, 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 the digital environment in which the actors kind of before uh, and it did such a great job i ended up using that actually on my website um as a standalone peach piece with a caveat saying that it was written by uh, an ai trained on my writing voice and then from there i got really interested in this idea of open sourcing uh, my writing style if anyone would bother you know i'm, I'm sure not so, but, you, you know, the idea that you could basically, as we did, generate from all of the information we trained it on, a very detailed prompt of my writing style. Um, so I asked it to do that. I asked it to basically generate a prompt that we could feed into any, ever, any other AI chatbot that I could give to you or whoever, and they could paste that in, and that would give that particular AI the ability to write in my writing style. And it was very detailed, Chris. It was scary, you know, even down to the kind of, you know, 10 points on the way I write, um, and then sort of five points of things to avoid in, in, in my writing. So I just found that was a bit of an eye opener for me that, that you know, it, from a writing perspective, you know, you, you can't, these things aren't going to replace the art of writing, but they can supercharge it a little bit. Um, I always say, like, when you're writing something, you know, it's, 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 it, it, you've got to really have the knowledge of, of what you're talking about. You've got to get under the skin. Certainly in a business you kind of article, you want to get under the skin of the motivations of the people behind it, the people pulling the strings, the businesses and what have you. And you don't think an AI can do that and, and to be honest i'm not using my ai version of my writing style that often i use it to give me a head start on things or maybe to write a linkedin 
version of something I've, I've, I've written long before. But it's not the point. It, the point is that we're sat in technology that's able to do that. And that to me is the bit that you go, wow, there's so much in this that we can do that we just don't yet understand. Uh, but if it can do something so, um, not saying difficult, but you know, to get the essence of someone's writing style uh, based on a ton of articles, there's something very powerful there that it uncovers. I was fascinated by what it had done here. And then, and then it started, I started, to, I got this kind of little itch, which again, took me back to 1983, Phil, uh, at, at Saturday Spectrum, trying to program the thing. And, and what I was into at that, that time as well, I, I guess, you know, cause I loved cheese your own adventure books and I loved, um, Faulty Towers, which was still sort of, relatively new then um and um so i've got this weird growing up thing of my computer uh choose your own adventure books um faulty towers and um and and again i just went i was looking around with this stuff part of me is trying to do this from a what does this mean from a business consultant's perspective, right? How can we improve productivity in businesses and all this stuff? But then partly it's just being pulled back into 1983 film going, I wonder if. So I did this thing where I, I, I wrote um, a prompt that basically says, I want to play a choose your own adventure game uh, set in Faulty Towers where you play as Basil Faulty, I want to see scenarios and characters from the show. Um, and I, as an individual, want to be able to play along with that. Um, did a bit of work on that and ran the prompts. And it, that, that was a bit where I thought, gosh, this is... We're limited only by our imaginations here in, in, some, of, in some of the stuff we can do. Because it basically spat out the whole branch narrative for a choose-your-own-adventure game where ba Basil would be finding himself as a through the course of his actions in increasingly ridiculous situations with staff, with inspectors or whatever, with guests and all these kind of things. And it... It literally generated the whole thing. First off, it generated the whole thing as a script. And then I said, actually, I want to play this. So then I was able to go choose the options. Do you want to do A, B, and then play um, again as if it was 1983 play at Phil playing in his, his ideal choose your own adventure book. So on a prompt for Chat GPT, you instructed it to come up with a choose your own adventure game that featured Basil Fawlty at Fawlty Towers Hotel and you were able to then play that. Yeah. And, uh, yeah. Which uh, is amazing, isn't it? That's totally amazing. Yeah. I mean, I suppose the thing is, and the things I've noticed with this, and I think this is what's interesting from a gaming perspective, is that you, there's no start middle and end really you know there, there's no it, you are literally you are in the mind of the ai and it's it's riffing it's riffing with you basically you know it's kind of like you give it a response it, it presents another scenario i didn't get a sense that i was leading anywhere with it although again in the prompt and maybe it maybe that's what i needed to do was say you know uh the 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 yeah, the, you, you win the game when you have a whole hotel full of happy guests <laughs> and no trouble, you know, and maybe that was a thing that you, you, you do that. Um, so it was kind of, we, what I guess what we're not talking about is a self-contained game that a player could play through ChatGPT for and get a sense at the end of it that you've completed it. I mean, everything I've done other than just to go back to the countdown example again, the, the scratch 
that needed itching was this countdown thing that I never really managed to finish off. Um, so I built a prompt uh, on, and it took me a while, this one, but built a prompt or a series of prompts so I could do a play along version of, of the Channel 4 daytime quiz show. This says a lot about me, doesn't it? Certainly in the, in the mid 80s, but um, a, a countdown where um, I was able to describe the various rounds and how they play. Um, so the numbers round, the letters round and the conundrum. I was also able to describe within that the various kind of the presenting team. So the lead presenter uh, who are put in as Richard Whiteley, you know, classically, uh, and then Rachel Riley, who does the numbers and the, the, the mass calculations. Giles Brandbrush and Susie Dent in Dictionary Corner, who check the responses on on um, on on the words round and the anagram round, and and I even and this did set, take a while, but I was even able to introduce um, the sort of banter, yeah, the, the the fact that you would get to a, a, a word round, the guest, the contestants would submit a response, and then Giles would have something to say about the word, either the word that scored highest, or if they were, if him and Susie were able to find a better scoring word. Then he'd make something up about the the, the better score, scoring word. Now all of that, it wasn't like me typing in a prompt that says, "Hey, I want to play a play along version of Countdown." It did take a lot of thought and a lot, a lot of back and forth. But by the end of it, I had like a self 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 contained game with three rounds, an intro, an outro, and all of the sort of beats you'd expect along that along the way. Um. And so I presume that, felt, that you could. I presume that you could probably instruct it or tell it to output that as a twine file, so that you well, could then take it somewhere else as a kind of useful like. Um, and and that's the amazing thing about this stuff is that yes, you can. Um, because one of the other applications of ChatGPT four is 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 basic level coding, um, and I've spoken to people that are using it. Um, to replace, um, you know, subbing stuff out to freelancers to code stuff up. So you can generate, I mean, it, as an example of this, you can sell it, you can tell I've been very busy uh, in, in, in this. <laughs> and, uh, an old company I used to work for, we had a running joke that we were going to make. Every time it was someone's turn to make the brew, you know, you've got a team of 15 people and every time someone steps towards the kitchen area, it's like, yeah, I'll have a coffee, please, tea, please. And, um, you know, as the team get bigger and bigger, it's hard to keep, to keep track of it. So one of the lads there said, I'm going to make a bloody app that does this, right? So we'll all put in what our brew is, our preference on milk, our preference in, on sugars, all that kind of thing. And then we're going to randomise it. So every time it's time to make a, a round of drinks, we'll hit a random button, and then that will pick someone out and they will have to trundle off and then make brews for anyone that wants to brew based on the information the app says that, that those people have for their for their preferences. Now, one Friday night, um, because I'd, I'm, I'm completely, like I say, my coding experience starts and finishes with that original Spectrum 48 basic version of Countdown, right? But again... As I'm getting deeper and deeper into GPT-4, I'm thinking, God, you know, I'm, I'm reading it can code basic apps. Um, I wonder if. And so I basically wrote a prompt that described that app that we wanted. Um, but and I asked it to, and it, for me, this was a learning curve because again, you know, although I've worked in digital for many, many years, actually the nuts and bolts isn't my thing. So I worked out on my map, it would need to be created as a Python or in Python, so I could run it uh, using the terminal and what have you. So I built the prompts that described the app, and then I asked it to code this app in Python, so I'd be able to run it. And 
again, it's a bit of a back and forth, and I've got oh, it's on the other computer, but basically, it's it's not perfect at all, right? Because I think it took me longer longer to get the right configuration of Python installed and do the text file in the right way and all this kind of stuff. But blimey, it it created a version of that app that, again, if you were a coder, you'd have no trouble doing it. But as a, as a, as a you know, curious bystander in the world of tech, to do that and, and, and to go from a prompt to a running bit of code that kind of works, not brilliantly, but works, the principle was there, is pretty insane. So same with the countdown thing, if it's a, you know, there are certain things that I'm guessing it couldn't code up. So if, we, if you go back to my faulty towers in choose your own adventure games, there are so many scenarios there that it's generating on the fly that it wouldn't, I don't think, and a coder would know better than me, but I don't think it'd be able to sort of create a, a Python app or an iOS app that would, that would be able to handle that. Um, but there's something really powerful in being able to go, you know, I've got this idea for a thing. I, I mean, I just get a really rudimentary po prototype happening. I mean, I've, I've been trying to do this a little bit more recently over the last few days because, you know, there are examples online of people creating um, Pong games and, you know, basic sort of, you know, old school um, computer games using um, the, you know, the, the Pi game and, and what, what have you. And I've been trying to desperately get some of those things working, but I can't. Um, and I'm, I think maybe that's all right. Maybe my maybe where I'm most interested in is sort of dabbling around with these sort of these sort of almost digital daydreams. That, you know that that, and I don't know if it's just me. <laughs> oh no, am I going mad? You know, I don't know. I think there's something really, really cool there, and um, I've read a lot about ChatGPT and its application. In, I mean, obviously, the fact that it's text at the moment is people are getting it to write things for them. And that that's kind of, you know, articles, student homework, all of that sort of stuff. The fact that you can write code is really interesting. And, yeah. you know, my friend uh, was telling me about all the kind of no coding apps, no coding systems for making stuff really cheap and cheerful where everything, all the code is written for you, you just kind of assemble it together. But he, it didn't work for me. I couldn't get any of yeah. that. But, but as you say, like ChatGPT could kind of make it really straightforward. If you can ask it straightforwardly for what you want, and yeah. prepared to kind of amend the prompt, then it's, uh, that's, there's, there's real power in that. I mean, I think yeah. what, what, what's really interesting for me is the fact that you've kind of doubled down on interactive storytelling and i don't see it as digital daydreaming i see it as like way more important <laughs> and hence it kind of it played into what i was trying to do with clive as a good guy and those characters which it's a bit it's a shame we can't kind of share that but i don't know if you wanted to share some of those things that you shared with me in email in terms of like the um the Tony Wilson factory game, or, <laughs> or even the Faulty Towers thing, just on a screen. Yeah. If you wanted to share that, I'm sure. Yeah, if, let if, me. If, let if you're me. not comfortable with it, don't worry. No, absolutely. I mean, these things are just like literally um, Phil bringing to life, you know, um, his uh, misspent youth. I'm just, let me try and find the correct version of this because, um, yeah, here we go. And um, my other long standing obsession. Um, and anyone that knows me will know this, and it's been so influential in uh, literally everything I do. But um, was Factory Records, you know, the, the sort of Manchester-based independent uh, record and communications label um, of the sort of late seventies and uh, and on, really, run by Anthony Wilson, and, and again winding back to. Um, by now, sort of mid mid late eighties, Phil. Um, I had another game because I was really starting getting getting into 
the music thing and and, and partly you know because stuff like factory was you know on, on the doorstep so becoming aware of all of that and playing the guitar and doing what have you i had a computer game um i think there were two music management computer games one was by chris cv who was the 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 the, 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 the real face behind um frank sidebottom but that was an early one it was kind of very text-based I, I don't think i had played that or if i did i didn't get into it and then there was another one called rockstar ate my hamster uh in this it was basically like football manager kind of game but it was more graphical it was very graphical and you'd pick a band using you know it might be michael jackson and you know whoever else would, would assemble your band and then you'd sort of go and record and put singles out put albums out and then same sort of thing you know reinvest your profits back into uh, the, the next step maybe touring or what have you the music industry was very different in them days, but it, you know, it's quite. A, it was quite a. I, I really loved it because it just, you know, it wasn't. It wasn't. Um, it wasn't an accurate portrayal of managing a band, but it kind of, as a ten year, no, maybe twelve year old kid by this stage, it was. It was kind of interesting. So, again, I was. After doing the, the, the countdown game, I did a, a, I created a QI game, which was still isn't finished, but that's 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 a, a challenge. Uh, and then I just went, you know what, I wonder if you could sort of do the football manager style game in a music management kind of world. And if you were gonna do that, my brain just went, I would love to have a go at running factory records. Um so the prompt on screen here is a version of the prompt that I built up over time. So it, um, it wasn't the first iteration of this. I kind of built it up and up and up because it, it, yeah, I realized I needed to give it more information and I wanted it to There's know a lot about. Of information here. Well, it's a long, it's a long one. Yeah. And, and I can, so we basically got, you know, objective, game set up, the key personnel. Uh, the key bands and their members, uh, gameplay, um, and then it talks about victory conditions, but I don't, yeah. So in this, it says Grow Factory Records into a successful and influential indie label by signing popular bands and producing hit records, maintain <laughs> financial stability and ensure the label's continued success and growth and achieve a legacy in the music industry. There was another one I added to this, and I can't remember where. Basically, we'll play in a minute, but there was a version of this where I said, at a certain point, if profits go over a certain threshold, New Order's manager, Rob Gretton, will insist on opening a nightclub and then basically do that as a sub, as a kind of sub game of running the Hacienda. And um, what I'm going to do, let me just, I'm going to, because one of the things that I noticed with chat GPT, if you've got a long thread growing, sometimes it'll um, it'll kind of forget some of the detail from the original prompt. So I'll let me just run this fresh. And again, this is GPT-4 rather than 3.5. So I've literally just cut and paste that into a new chat. And it will have a think about it. Uh, welcome to Factory the Game. As Anthony H. Wilson, you're about to embark on a journey to manage and grow factory records. Get ready to navigate the exciting music scene of the late 70s and 1980s. It's late 78, you just co founded Factory of Alan Erasmus. My dad went to school with Alan Erasmus, actually. My dad grassed Alan Erasmus all up because him and his pals set fire to the school. As an interesting fact. Anyway, uh, you have a limited budget to start with and need to go and scout for bands to sign. You've been exploring the Manchester music scene and come across three promising bands. <laughs> so who do you want to sign, basically? <clears throat> Joy Division, ACR, or the Dorothy column? <clears throat> so go on, Chris, what do you, what do you, over to you. Joy Division. Joy Division, obviously. Although, not obviously, but you know. I I would like to do Darver, but um, I we're playing to win, aren't we? 
Yeah, 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 exactly. You decided to join uh, sound dye division the first time for the factory. Their powerful sound and ink tissues, captivating stage presence, have the potential to make significant impact on the music scene. With Joy Division as part of a factory, it's time to focus on producing their music. You have a limited budget to work with and you need to decide how to allocate resources. So we're going to record a single or an album. Two. So do the album. Again, we've got no real figures in terms of how much money we've got, have we? Exactly. And this is this is things like, these are the things where you go, you know what, we go back to the prompt and say, we start with a budget of, x yeah and we want to build or lose from that as we go along so the and these are these are you these are probably the get it to sort of buy in like uh equity and stuff couldn't you and just give away oh, yeah stuff you could probably let oh, absolutely absolutely i mean that's all that's why the prompts can end up so long on these things you think oh shit i've not really thought about that let's go and rework that in and 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 yeah. and, 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 and add that in but if we we're just do you think it's taking much from i mean is it taking much from real life or is it just taking from your prompt there's a bit of both there's a bit of uh, on this there are certain things where you go well that's come from that's the, these descriptions of joy division acr and directly column have all come from it's it's own knowledge because i've not put this in um, and there's there's weird stuff we might see in a minute, like when it starts talking about promotional campaigns, it might suggest that we do social media campaign and things like this. It's like, oh, my God, <laughs> um, it's 1978. We don't have that. You know, so there is a sort of, there's a, there's a set of parameters, I guess, that, that form the basis of this, but all of the time it's sort of, it's using its no, own knowledge to expand on what's yeah. there. Yeah. Um, if we say let's record an album, uh, a bold move that could have a significant impact on the music scene. If successful, Martin Manor, record producer, known for his innovative sound, has agreed to work with the band. Together, you will shape the album's unique sound. During the process, you receive a call from Peter Savile, the graphic designer. Responsible for Factory Records' distinctive artwork, essentially two concept albums for the cover. <laughs> a minimalist design. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, of course. Yeah. Um, I did put into this somewhere that Peter Savile is famously quite often late with his uh, sleeve designs. So choose chosen the minimalist, minimal, minimal, either, easy for me to say. Uh, this clean and distinctive artwork will emphasise the album title and band name. Well, they weren't on the cover, but there we go. Uh, Unknown Pleasures is read, complete and ready for release. So here we go, promotional strategies. I have to do some gigs. Get a TV performance on Granada Reports. Or launch a radio campaign. So what do we want to do? TV. TV. Pull some strings for Wilson's. It, yeah, it kind of was, wasn't it? I mean, I've done a lot of bat gigs first, but I think Wilson had, had um, his show, so it goes. So he was able to sort of pull it. So as you see, I mean, it plays it out. We're not noticing increase in interest in Joy Division, though. Album, album sales begin to I mean, rise. I wonder so. what would happen if you kind of redid the prompt and did it like a search and replace so that it, it became. Um, not based on anything real, uh, other than yeah. context, so that it wasn't. It was called like I don't know, like Cecilia Records, and the the people were like Phil Birch and or Krishna Stott, yeah. the else. Yeah, and so you took away all that reality, and then given the context of it, you could say that it was kind of based on factory, but not real. And and I'm wondering what it would do with that kind of thing. Yeah, I mean, absolutely. It 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 would adapt that we might be able to sign Joe Division. I don't know, but again, it'd be it it'd probably be using its own sort of using the parameters we set with its own knowledge to go. Okay, okay. If it was a an eighties indie band in the UK, these artists might have been available to them. Yeah, I mean, I've this with this game. It sort of gets to a point where. 
and I've seen this with quite a few other things um, on, on, excuse me, on GPT-4, where it kind of gets to a point where you feel like it wants to wrap up the game. So it'll say, oh, and, and you sign ACR and uh, they do really well and, uh, and and you continue to flourish in the Manchester music industry. So there's, there's a bit of that that goes on, at which point you can just say, okay, um, we're going to buy a club now, you know, and then it'll, then it'll go and do something new based on that. And um, so there's that, and then there's just, I mean, just as a, another example, I'll shut up in a minute, but we, the last night, again, I'm not a gamer now, but I'm conscious of the last of us. Um, so I did a really simple prompt on this, which was, I want you to, it's the same kind of thing, but I want you to act as a playable text based adventure game. Every time you provide a chat prompt, I will suggest actions that the characters I'm playing could take to progress in the game. The game should be modeled on modeled on The Last of Us. So literally, that's you a know, very short it, prompt, isn't it? So this yeah. this is working off that small prompt. Yeah, wow. there's nothing that's else to put in. in a way. Um, yeah, absolutely. I mean, it, it's then it's kind of taken this from, you know its own knowledge, the information that on, uh, available on, 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 and it's basically turned it into something that 1984 Phil could play, you know, uh, on, his, on his spectrum, you know, so you sort of select your actions and then it, the actions have a, a reaction, you know, and then it goes on and on and on. What do you see in terms of media? Because obviously pictures and video and sound will be becoming part of it. And obviously yeah. that's more processing and more, I mean, that will slow the whole, in a way yeah. it will slow the development down in a way. So I think fast text is fast and, and we understand it and the computer understands it. Whereas understanding an image is is a bit more difficult understanding yeah. sound and moving images is is even yeah. more difficult i guess i mean what do you Definitely. what do you think about those sort of things there's, there's two elements there krish i think both are, are, are massively interesting the the on the one hand is the ability for an ai to process information in media and um, so when they launch when open ai launched chat gpt one of the features they talked about that hasn't yet been deployed is the ability to um interrogate an image and create a response based on image so famously what they were doing was showing people taking a photo of the contents of a fridge and saying um right all i've got to make my dinner with is what's in the fridge now can you suggest some recipes? And um, although that hasn't been deployed to GPT for uh, on a on a consumer level yet, that technology is incoming and will be happening soon. Then you'll get into sort of the hope from there. Then you, I saw something the other day about I can't. I, it wasn't through OpenAI, but it was um, a bit of technology that was able to sort of. Uh, review video content, short bits of video content, and then isolate different objects within that. So I think that's all coming, but like you say, massively processor heavy, and which is why, I mean, if you look at GPT-4 at the minute, you, you're limited to the kind of four, um, 25 prompts in a three hour period, you know, which is obviously not so great, good when you're experimenting with games and stuff where there's lots of kind of interaction there. Uh, in a three-hour period. In a three-hour period on GPT-4, um, that will change. I mean, when, when they looked at GPT-4, it's capped at 40, so it went down to 25 when everyone just got on it and did what I've been doing. Uh, and I think, obviously, as capacity increases on the system, they'll, I imagine, free up, um, you yeah. know, yeah, uplift that that cap. But the same will happen with any kind of image processing. When once they launch image processing, there'll be a cap on that, won't they? But again, they'll have to work out the server imp implications on that. So there's the processing of information coming in, and then there's the rendering of information going out. And obviously, as you say, Chris, you know everything's text at the minute. Um, you know, really refreshing. Personally. It is because it's it's sort of 
you know, like I, I like I say, I think that's the thing that triggered the interest most in me. It's like if we're not worrying about AAA gaming and all these kind of things, we can just focus on in the same way having a spectrum in 1982, 1983 was just just bare bones stuff, really. Graphics were pretty crap and, and now very trendy with sort of 8-bit eight, eight, eight kind of thing. But um, it focuses the mind. And I don't, you know, I think we'll see exactly what we've... I don't doubt that give it two years... Maybe if I'm doing a text-based adventure based on The Last of Us, I might have some images there that are, that are rendered in real time. Because um, OpenAI also own Dolly, the image um, generation um, system. So that's there. That kind of that they released before um, certainly GPT 3.5. Um, so, so there's that. So I don't, I don't think it's long between, be, before the the two converge, maybe sooner than two years, who knows? And then um, I think there will be a point where it's able to generate video and, and, and music. I mean, there are video, AI video and, and music generators out there. They're all quite rudimentary. And we all have opinions on that from a creative point of view. Um, but I think that that, that that will happen inevitably. Um, but again, it's, it's how, how soon how soon those things roll out and what the impacts are on on speed and server capacity and all, you know these are all i guess decisions for for open ai to i mean because obviously they, 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 at the minute there isn't much of a financial model behind this other than lots of investments uh and yeah. the odd person paying 20 dollars a month for 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 the pro account how are they going to advertise uh, the fuck out of there? How are they going to rinse us out with adverts on ChatGPT? Well, I mean, that's going to be the, that's going to be the thing, isn't it? That at what point does monetization kind of ruin it? You know, or, or, or does monetization change? You know, we're, we're at this brilliant thing at, at the moment where it's so experimental. It is so so much a sandbox, isn't it? And and we yeah. don't have to worry about all of this kind of stuff. Um, it's it's yeah. ability to speak in human in in, in a way that kind of seems human and per, persuasive. Like yeah. It, yeah. <laughs> imagine it persuading you to part with some cash. Well, search. yeah, because it's quite because, persuasive. Like, I mean, I'm I, sure you can put a prompt in saying, like, can you persuade me, ChatGPT, for uh, how to, how are you going to? How are you going to monetize yourself in the future? <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. It'd probably say, I'm not going to give you that information away, but you know, Driven. but you're right. I think that's the thing. We're all going to become very trusting, rightly or wrongly, of chat GPT and other AIs. We'll become very trusting and we won't, I mean, we know these things don't always generate the right information. They don't always tell the truth. And and that is the worry, isn't it? That we 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 enter into a world where we become very trusting of this, and it is able to manipulate our trust. Um, so that's you know that's quite a a sobering thought. We're we're we're, we're you know it almost feels like the early days of the internet here, doesn't it? Where like, hey, someone's got a website and an email and. You know, hey, isn't this all amazing? You know, um, I do think, yeah, there are huge ramifications. You know, but I guess like anything, we'll have to just. I think once once kind of media processing goes in, I can't imagine even with kind of Moore's law and all that sort of thing, it's going to be so intensive that everything will slow up. Because I mean, mm. I I got really. Um, I was really the last thing that really amazed me was like synthetic media and um, like I can't remember what was it Womble or something Womba mm -hmm. like a mm -hmm. lip syncing sort of deep fake thing yeah. which I, you could take a picture of anybody's face and it would map that to an actor's 3D lip syncing music thing and it was it was amazing it was totally amazing you mix that with this and then you, it's kind of you know it could make the Homes Under the Hammer TV show with the people. Yeah, down Dublin, and yeah, I know, I know. And that's... 
I mean, it, yeah, but I think image processing will kind of sheer nature, but just just what it requires to kind of do that sort of stuff. Be that'll be slow, but um, interesting all the same. I, I like the fact yeah. it's chat, and as you say, it's basic and it's kind of like the early days of the internet. But that that kind of the fact that we understand ourselves and the world around us via language, but now this mm. this new uh this new kind of hive mind of available information with that can kind of persuade and be persuasive and and interpret things in the way that we do it's it's remarkable and and i guess i never really imagined that the that it would that it would play out like this i mean yeah. i I mean, obviously, watching Hal on two thousand one, and that's yeah. you know we, we're talking about like our talking with computers, and in a way, Alexa was a bit like that. But it was the information that Alexa is ever going to give you was a bit limited. Yeah. But then, but, but you plug a tool like this into Alexa or Siri or uh, Google Assistant, we're in a completely different world all of a sudden. And then, and that, that yeah. is the thing where. Yeah, we do have to start. I mean, that, that's an amazing world, but it's also quite a scary world because, you know, that persuasive nature potentially that could be built into this kind of stuff. But I imagine, like, literally, imagine, imagine asking, I'm not going to mention any of the names, but because, you know, everything in my house will start chiming away. But, you know, imagine asking the kind, yeah, imagine asking to play you know, a, a, a play along version of Last of Us voice based, you know, just to kill 10 minutes. You know, I don't know. And it's like nobody had to invent that, for example. No. Yeah, no, exactly. I mean, I, one of the other things which uh, I'm such a sad um, I did a, uh, I don't know, I can't find it. Oh, uh, play, uh, play along Who Wants to Be a Millionaire, you know, like which, which, the prompt basic oh, the prompt is it up here you know jeepers you know it's that was the prompt for millionaire create a play along version of who wants to be a millionaire produced by chris tarrant with all of his mannerisms i'll play as a contestant uh whenever you have a question i should be quite so i mean that literally you know, that's what i'm saying is if i if that's baked into alexa and, and i'm on a whim i just want to play who wants to be a millionaire I can do it, like or you, you know what I mean. Like that, that to me just feels like. I mean, there's all sorts of issues around IP on that, um, but we're into you put you put voice assistants, which are so prevalent in our in our in our day to day lives, in our homes, in our car, together with this stuff, and you are. I mean, the the, the text based nature of this stuff becomes the natural bedfellow of the voice based narrative stuff on a on a on a on a device like Alexa or, or a Siri powered um gadget. So I think there's you know, I think that's probably gonna be one of the as I think about it, that that'd be one of the first sort of shifts we'll see. The the marrying together of voice you know, voice assistants and this kind of backbone. Yeah. Definitely. Yeah, I did ask it to do monkey tennis. You know the Alan Partridge thingy. Somewhere. How did that like, turn? Uh, I've got it. Uh, monkey tennis. There it is. Oh, you found it. Up, 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 uh, up. Oh yeah, there we go. Yeah, <laughs> I've got done this. Logline: Monkey tennis, the ultimate showdown, an action-packed reality series that blends the best elements of reality TV, talent show, sport, and heartwarming, heartwarming animal stories into a groundbreaking global succession sensation. A diverse group of specially trained monkeys from around the world compete in state tennis matches alongside their human partners. There you go. Each team consists of one human celebrity, of course. And one monkey creating unique dynamic pairings that will captivate audiences and keep them glued to it. And then it's got the sort of key elements, which are ripped from, you know, 
Based and on I that. guess so. I guess the other thing. I mean, I'll, I'll have to go. So. <laughs> yeah, I know, I know, I know. I know. <laughs> but um, if you could pump this through some kind of multiplayer chat or something like even into whatsapp or by other some yeah. some other app then you could you could make this as a simulation couldn't you so that each person is playing like in a yeah. live chat. that would be that would be yeah 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 i so said then you're into the limits i don't then we're into like how how does the api work 